this is Joseph Say. This is my video on the causes of deer overpopulation. And the first thing I'm going to do is show you um, how the deer in one environment vary, the looks of one environment vary from the other ones without deer. Here's an example of what happens when deer aren't allowed in an area and when they are. Outside the area, where the, outside the enclosed area where the deer can, yeah, it's a lot less green because the deer eat everything before it really grows. And then in here, the deer can't get in, so everything can grow for a while and it gets more green. Right over here, there's all these plants around the river. It's so lush because deer can't get here due to the fences I mentioned before. They can't get here, so it lets all these plants that normally would grow to come up, spring up. So they have plants all over. Some people, here's some people who are get being annoyed by the overpopulation of deer. Here's one woman on the street. Hi, I want to just ask you a few questions for you on deer overpopulation. One of them is, are deer bothering you in your home or on the roads? On the roads. Okay. Um, do you have a garden? I don't, but my father does. Very big garden. Okay. What do you, um, are you in favor of deer color? Um, yes. Well, I just feel that they should be not allowed to. They're a little overpopulated right now, especially when you when you're driving and you're on the road, especially at night, especially in the winter time. You know, when it's dark out and it's cold out. And last question: What do you think would be a better alternative? To have a little, to have a, a fixed area where the deer can populate themselves or be amongst themselves, in a, more or less, rather than roaming around, to be able to be in one confined area. Okay. This is what a tea town volunteer has to say about the deer overpopulation. Hi, I was just wondering. I know you work at, oh, you volunteer for tea town. Do you think there's a difference in like? how much, well yeah, there's probably a difference, but can you explain a bit about the difference between the undergrowth on the island and protected areas? Oh, absolutely, right. When you go out on the island, just visually, you can see a lot more of the undergrowth, because when the deer come in, they eat so much of it, mm -hmm. and also, they eat the wildflowers. I mean, if you look at the wildflowers on the island and compare it to the wildflowers just in other parts of T-Town, you'll see a tremendous, tremendous difference. So they've really changed the forest floor completely, both in the undergrowth as well as the wildflowers and plants. It's very different today than it was even just 30, 40 years ago. It's not as apparent it was a little earlier. But still, if you compare this, it's very dense. Um, you know, see, I don't know if they can see this much. It's even over there, it's less dense undergrowth. But as I said, earlier in the season, it was more apparent. All right. Do you think that, like, the deer could eat invasive plants, and maybe that could help? We certainly would like them to eat invasive plants, like, but um, barberry is one that is just very invasive, and they do not eat. Mm -hmm. Japanese stillgrass is very invasive, and I have never known deer to eat that. So mm -hmm. there are certainly some I wish they did eat, and that would be good. This is the view of Laura Mark, someone who is strongly against deer culture. Hello. My name is Laura Marks. And you work for a company or anything about Uh No, I'm in college. So um, the paper that I gave you, I went to Boston University for my first year. So that's all material from there. Yeah. Um, all the information you'll see is credible. I found it on pretty intense sites. Um, there are about 35 sources that back everything that I said on there. So that can set up the project really well. Um, I have some quick questions about the deer population. Do they have a change in diet? What do deer usually eat? Or do they usually eat before they are overpopulated? Well, the overpopulation of the deer actually happened because of humans. Um, and so the more that humans want to, because deer, as you know, they don't eat meat, so they eat greens. And so because humans become overpopulated, they like greenery, so they plant a lot of greenery. And when they plant greens, then the deer are attracted. But then the people are getting angry that the deer are eating the greens. But it's kind of a cycle because the people are doing it, and then the people are getting angry about it. 
so they're being, I mean, I guess they're being targeted or they're being victimized for human mistakes. Yeah. So, do you know what caused those couples from this area? I don't know particularly with this area. Um, I think it's just generally, as kind of humans are attracting deer with the food that they're providing them. No. Um, what, else, what, what are you? What do you say, and why are you doing about the overpopulation at Sand Town and their color? Um, well, I'm obviously extremely against it. Um, I'm starting my own activist blog um, online, so I'm going to be writing a lot about it. Um, but I think that it's again, it's humans doing stuff, and yeah. then they're getting angry at other animals for you know being around. And I think that nature is being demonized heavily, which um, it demonized. It can. It's just basically they're being targeted. They're being looked at as bad. And they shouldn't be because it's humans that are doing the bad thing, and then they're blaming other people or other animals for what they're doing. Um, so T Town is being very shady about things. They're not telling the public, which is a huge, you know, because why wouldn't you tell the public if you think, you know, that they're going to respond well? So obviously they know that the people would be angry, and so that's why they're trying to keep it a secret. Um, so I'm obviously extremely against it, and I'll say it on any forum I can. Go. So what else can be done? I think um, there are definitely humane methods of treating the deer population. I think killing is the most extreme form of it. Um, there's birth control, there's relocation, um, there's, and I mean, the unfortunate thing is nature does it its own way, and its own way is letting them sometimes starve or letting the population reach a max where they can't necessarily survive. But that's nature doing it, so it's different than when you bring in guns, and you know, when you bring in guns, that's artificial, and that's humans being cool. So I think that, if anything, let nature take its course, and unfortunately we have to watch the ugly effect, but at least we're not doing anything violent. This is Joseph Shea again. This is my, that's, that is all I have to say about the deer population for now. Um, a lot of people are against the culling. But it is, they say it's inhumane, but is it also really inhumane to let them starve and die from disease? You never know. That, that, that's happened though, because people keep planting new nourishing foods that help the deer grow, live, and stay alive. Maybe it will solve itself, but it might, might nature take its course. But you never know. Let's, let's see what happens.